This is Center Stage, putting your firm in the spotlight by highlighting business owners and other industry experts to help take your firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson, and this week, we were talking about building a community on social media. And in my opinion, uh, I think this is a little bit tougher of a thing to do for a lot of law firms. Uh, it might be a little bit easier for you financial folks out there. But I think for law firms, because of the often sensitive and private nature of the content that you're posting about, maybe some people, a lot of people might be a little hesitant to engage. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you might have a little bit more of an uphill battle. But your social media presence is absolutely still vitally important for your audience. They're there, they're consuming your content. So I think it's good to try to figure out what we can do to get them to engage. And so joining me this week is someone who has built a really cool, uh, very active and engaged community in the legal space. And, and that is the founder of WTF Divorce, Rob Roseman. Thanks for joining us this week. Thank you, John. I'm excited to be here and talk shop. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about WTF Divorce. How did you start it? What's it all about? Yeah. So, I mean, I have a unique background. I used to be a professional poker player in Vegas, uh, since then had a family and three years ago got divorced. So mm -hmm. with a, used to have a dad podcast uh, called Dad the Best I Can. When I went through divorce, I realized that this is a massive problem that I was going through that a lot of people were going through. Mm -hmm. And just kind of using my background in marketing, thought this would be neat to share with other people what I was learning, because there is such great content out there from therapists, from coaches, from lawyers that, mm -hmm. look, I wish I had when I was trying to pick a lawyer, when I was trying to figure out where all this money was coming from. Um, so I, yeah, I was just like, market problem. I was like, how can I connect the two? I started a podcast called WTF Divorce. I thought, you know, a catchy name that really spoke yep. to exactly what people are going through. And we started just growing pretty quick, got over 100,000 downloads on the podcast, the Instagram, which we can talk about really started to explode after experimenting yeah. with a lot of stuff. But really, it was a place to build community where people that were thinking about divorce, in the middle of it, figuring out life after could kind of engage with content that they could relate to, ask questions, share stories. And the piece that I uh, started developing was like, let's, how can we get these professionals, the lawyers, the coaches that are already making great content that might have, you know, 140 followers yeah. and don't have the time and the bandwidth to sit and try and grow their social media. How can we connect them with the audience that they are trying to speak with? So yeah. Just kind of like organically, like, let me build the community, find the professionals. And if we can put the two together, it can be a win-win for everybody. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, kind of our situation is a little different, at least what we're doing at Spotlight Branding. You know, our audience is the lawyers, whereas your audience is the same people that the lawyers are trying to reach. So I, I think that you can provide a lot of really good insight, and especially because I think family law is... Uh, you know, at least on paper, I, I would think it's a little bit more difficult because maybe people aren't super willing to talk about what they're going through in their personal life when it comes to divorce. And so, you know, when you when you look back at kind of the early days of your social media presence, I mean, what was the engagement like early on? I mean, were you able to kind of catch fire pretty quickly or was it kind of slow to start and it kind of built momentum over time? It always slow to start. You're always starting with zero. It's actually that zero to a hundred is the, kind of the hardest thing a lot of times. Um, yeah, I think what I learned is there are people that are out there. I actually mm. designed this to help divorce men going through it, divorce dads. What yeah. I quickly learned is that 80% of the audience that are seeking this kind of info were women. And mm. uh, I talked to a lot of women that said, I want to learn this too. So, so yeah, I was in the beginning, I was sharing a lot of just like resharing, like, uh, Deborah Whitson, a divorce attorney made a video. Uh, yeah. I know she's one of your clients that yeah. talking about like how to, you know, draft your settlement agreement. And I was like, I wish I knew that what I learned though, in the beginning. And I think a lot of mis a mistake that a lot of, uh, lawyers, professionals, look, we all make is we're just kind of, we are providing value, 
sometimes it's a little bit too much about ourselves. I think that's mm -hmm. something we fall into. Yeah. We'll always be thinking of the person listening, which they're not a lawyer. They are going yeah. through a problem. So lead with the problem. If you're having trouble getting your uh, ex to sign the papers, yes, I'm listening. Right. Uh, but the trick that I found is why are people on social media? Usually it's to be entertained, to be distracted, to watch funny videos, uh, also to learn. But I think what I learned is like just providing like valuable educational content is helpful, but to really like grow an audience, you've also got to add some personality, show them who you are, give them what you want. So really just a lot of experimenting and being that I'm not a divorce lawyer professional, I can just throw up all kinds of crap, see what works. Yeah. Like memes really took off. We had a meme yeah. that reached like 56 million views. And I was like, wow, this is bringing people in the door. But again, divorce lawyers aren't going to sit and probably make their online media presence about memes, but they also like that kind of content. So just kind of being like a, like, I'll hold your hand. We'll, we'll do this together idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask you in terms of like, what kind of content, you know, does do a good job of, of getting that attention. And I mean, it sounds like, you know, at least in your experience, it kind of sounds like, you know, the memes and the, re the relativity, I don't know, the, the relatableness, I guess, for lack of a better term there, um, you know, gets people's attention, gets them in the door. And then it's that valuable content and, and answering those questions and addressing those things that they were wondering about that's what kind of keeps them inside exactly uh you know mentor of mine said look you've got to be 75 percent just giving entertaining teaching and then then come in with the uh what you're offering them um so yeah. in the case of like social media it would be entertain 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 and then i'll teach you how to be a better co-parent or somebody will teach you so kind yeah. of like the the spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down I was more like, again, putting always putting yourself in the shoes of the person that you're trying to reach. They might appreciate like kind of legal content, bang, bang, bang. But the reality is, is like, I'm more likely to engage with like, uh, you know, we just posted a funny, I'll take a spin on a funny video and put yeah. kind of a divorce legal spin on it. Yeah. And a lot of people see that and they said, like walking out of the door of my divorce lawyer's office, kind of something about like, out all their money. And you yeah. got a lot of people that see that and they're like, that's how I felt. And then the next video might be a divorce lawyer who works with us and we feature their stuff. And there's kind of just this feedback loop where you build trust with the audience where there's like this, oh, I like this personality. They must, you know, have the same sense of humor, sensibility as, as me. I'm more likely to trust and want to pick up the phone and talk to that person. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, one of the things that I see a lot of legal um platforms make whether it's a law firm or even even in our industry and just trying to reach a, a legal audience it's just it's all the kind of the same thing right it's like uh you know especially with law firms every post seems like ends with call us to this call us call us call us call us and it's like that's going to turn people off. Like if you're constantly trying to sell them something, people are going to go somewhere else. Like people are not on social media necessarily to get sold to. They're out there just looking for things to consume. And then if something piques their interest, they're going to dig a little bit deeper for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, look, there again, if you're a lawyer, this is not your full-time job is to be posting fun, interesting content. It takes a lot. And I do think well, yes, a happy Thanksgiving from our office post. Most people are going to scroll through, not even see it. It does off. I think something is a lot better than nothing. So having yes. a presence is very important because look, when I am deciding on who to choose an attorney, and this is what I did is I Google them. I go on their website. If I'm impressed with their website, I'll look. They usually have links to their social media. And I go on there. And if somebody doesn't have it, I'll be like, eh, let me look at this person that does. I hear the lawyer speaking and it just like uh, increases my my confidence in that person. So definitely something is better than nothing. And to be consistent and just putting stuff out there because you don't want to see somebody's last post was from, uh, you know, March of 2020. I might think, are they even open? Yeah. But yeah. If you can inject a little bit of video, a little bit of personality uh, on our podcast, the WTF Divorce podcast will actually interview lawyers and I'll kind of just get questions 
that we get from our Instagram and say, hey, I'm dealing with this problem, have the lawyer respond to it, and then I can cut that up, put it on our social, they can share it on their social, and all of a sudden, the dauntingness uh, of I've got to create content, I see it, I like it, but I don't have time for it, really might just be like a five-minute Zoom call where you answer two questions, and yeah. that could be something that can you can have forever that people will always find. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing that I talk a lot about, especially with like video content, but even just the content that you're posting on social media in general, it's just about humanizing your law firm. Because I think a lot of people still, they're intimidated by the legal world. They they see it as just this massive, complicated, scary thing. And that lawyers are just these almost kind of mean robotic, just like, give me your money, I'll take care of this and and move on. But I think a lot of times that I've seen, especially, and you know this in working with lawyers, like they're, they're just people like the rest of us. They have personalities, they have interests. This is just their field. And so the content, you know, being able to create content like that, even if it's just video explaining a, a concept, answering a question, it does, it goes a long way towards humanizing that industry and breaking down a lot of those barriers that people have. Absolutely. And I think uh, you can get, again, I didn't really even do this when I was choosing an attorney because I didn't know about any of this, but uh, you learn that there are like red flags of certain attorneys might be, I'm going to get them for everything they're worth. Like mm -hmm. you're like, well, that when you don't know anything might sound appealing because you're in a kind of a vindictive mood. The real, really your best bet is to go with an attorney that probably is collaborative that wants to save you time, wants to save you money, wants to do what's best for your kids. And that's kind of messaging that you can get across on social media with, you know, whether it's a static post, which is like a resharing something. That's like another thing a lot of the lawyers do is we'll create something that really resonates with them. And all of a sudden they can put it on their page. And it's just a way to kind of, like you said, show their personality. Because again, you see like three posts from somebody that you can relate to there's like mm -hmm. this bond yeah. that uh, people are not getting if they're not posting or if they're only putting like open monday to friday call us like you said yeah exactly so i know in in our marketing world especially when it comes to social media a lot of people say you know it's got to be about the engagement you got to get the likes you got to get the comments and the shares and all of that so what sorts of things do you do with your instagram page to generate a lot of that engagement yeah, again, it's learning on the fly, learning through failure. They don't all have to hit. Um, yeah. I think like it is a mix of what I learned on Instagram is they are trying to be like TikTok whiz with the short videos. So even if it's like turning a static post into a video, you might get more people in there adding a little bit of music. Uh, I don't think they all have to be home runs. So it could be like yeah. kind of boring, educational, educational, and then throw in a little bit of personality. So just mixing it up, experimenting with it. I think some people get a little too caught up in like my page has to look perfect with this format. I was guilty of that too. Mm -hmm. And I know as a professional, you do want to have a, a polished presence. Another reason why like, you know, collaborating with other accounts and sharing their content is a way to kind of get that vibe while also keeping that professional feel about your firm. But just, uh, you know, social media is fleeting. Not many people are going to see what you're doing. But like, if I'm looking for an attorney, I'm probably going to go back, scroll, say, oh, what's this video? Oh, you know, and that video that might have had uh, the other thing, too, is like you're really looking for a select number of clients. You getting a million views on your let me tell you about how to you know solve your divorce case. It's not really what you want. You want a right. specific person to find you and to work with you. And that content, it's kind of surprising. And it's unfortunately not always a. Uh, attributable like you won't know that i saw this but i imagine a lot of people are even subconsciously factoring in the stuff that you've posted that could even been from a year ago yeah and i think that's a really good point it's like you know sure your post went viral it got a million views but how many out of those million are people that could actually potentially end up working with you versus you got in front of a hundred people, you know exactly that those are the hundred people that could potentially work with you. I think you could, there's more potential in, you know, that smaller reach if that's the target audience that, that you're really trying to go for. Um, so, so we kind of talked about the visual components, video memes and stuff like that. What's your opinion 
on, you know, kind of the captions for the post, you know, what kind of stuff do you put in the actual written part, you know, whether it's hashtags or just kind of the way you structure the, the copy of, of the post that you're putting out. Uh, I've learned the hard way that short almost always outperforms long. So that's mm. part of it. I think, uh, again, being kind of relatable emojis, while they seem silly, they grab your attention. They just do like we're always yeah. our eyes are just going to gravitate towards that. So that could be something you throw in there also shows a little bit of your personality. But if you're not comfortable with that, it could just be like a, a check mark with a, if you need help with this problem call us for a free consult. So I do think there's something to be said for offering some kind of CTA. It, it might not yeah. need to be like, like you said, at the end of all your posts, better call Saul, like call me right. if you need this. Yeah. But just give them uh, what action do you want them to take? It might even be, hey, follow our page. I think that is probably your lowest uh, friction thing that on social media, that that could be a win. Because the other thing is like, a lot of your clients are coming from word of mouth. They might mm -hmm. not even know they're getting divorced, but in two years, if their friend has seen this content, or maybe they've seen them on WTF Divorce, there's this, oh, you should just go check out this page. So I think uh, experimenting with stuff, yes, trying hashtags, I wouldn't get too in the weeds on that stuff, but mm -hmm. just being consistent, be willing to you know, fail on some of them, they're going to be busts. I think that's a big piece that a lot of us, I'm guilty of too, you want that mall to hit. But oh, yeah. Like, Hitting publish is almost always better than than keeping it in. If it's if it's really egregious, you can always delete it. But uh, yeah, the more content you're putting out there, the more people are going to see you. Yeah, and so uh, you brought up a very interesting point with with the word of mouth. You know, because I, especially in the legal industry, you know this. That's such a huge, you know, and very important part of the business. And so, being able to take that strategy and use social media to do that. I think is a really, really big opportunity there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you then, you know, if, if we're talking about metrics and, and kind of way to start, because I, you know, lawyers, they want to know the data, what's the data, what's the ROI that I'm getting on there, you know, what kinds, you know, what elements uh, of the, the data are important in terms of trying to figure out kind of the ROI that you're getting on your social media? Yeah, again, I think uh, what you want to see is like a little bit of engagement. Again, your post in the beginning might get four likes. And let's face it, that's kind of demoralizing and feels thankless for all of us. And I think that is a tricky thing about social media is compared to different ways of marketing, you're not always going to get the metrics that you're hoping for and saying, huh, I'm investing in this, I'm making videos, what is the point of it? But it really is like it's evergreen, so it'll be there forever. You can also yeah. put it on your website. But yeah. yeah, that's a disconnect that I think we all struggle with is like, how can I track if this was worth it? But I think it is kind of more of a holistic like way to look at it as like, you're just building your authority. This is another place where you're putting stuff that anybody can find you. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's a challenge is like being able to see, you know, I got 17 likes on this one. It got 92 on this one. That's what are we doing here? Let's follow it. But yeah. In reality, it's like come up with a plan, uh, mix and experiment with stuff, but just be consistent, put yourself out there and give value. I think that's what most people uh, struggle with is we all talk about ourselves. You know, I'm guilty of it, too. It's like, what do they say? Nobody cares about you. They only care about themselves. So even mm -hmm. starting a video or something and saying, hey, I'm, you know, I'm Rob. I do this, this, this on social media. I might have clicked off by then. But you notice things like uh, the hook, as they say, like your first five, 10 seconds, and I'll even have some of our lawyers and coaches re-record uh, re something or kind of like edit it where that first line should be speaking about the problem. So it could yeah. be like, if you're having trouble getting your lawyer to get back to you, all of a sudden, I'm now going to probably watch another 10 seconds of that video. So I think really constantly thinking, would I watch this if I was you know, my ideal client? always putting yourself in that, that those shoes is important. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think, I think one thing that a lot of people lose sight on, especially when talking about metrics is they just, they look at the data and they 
almost kind of see some sort of finality with it, right? Like, you know, oh, my posts only get four likes, social media just must not be working. I just need to go do something else where it's like, no, like you can use that as an opportunity to, like you said, test out different things, right? Maybe post at a different time, maybe try, you know, ask a question in the caption, shorten your caption, you know, post a, a different kind of content. You know, there's, there's so many different things that you can try to make the data get to where you want it to go. That's a great point. You just even reminded me of something. A lot of people are not going to see your posts just because of the algorithm and things that yeah. are out of your control. So like I have posted things that really did great or didn't do great, but 90% of the people that are now looking at my stuff might have never seen that. So even resharing, having yes. a schedule of like this post from six months ago, I'm just going to share it again. You have to remember, we all take for granted because we're making this content. We think everybody's seeing it. Yeah. Nobody's seeing it. You know, 1%, even your mom's not seeing it. So yeah. like kind of erring on the side and uh, it's taken me a while to to get to this point, but just like oversharing in some ways, you know, and yeah. something like on Instagram could just be like, eh, I'm going to share it to my story and somebody might see it. Um, yeah. Another thing I do that's that's worked really well is using like the... Uh, Instagram story feature where you can kind of get engagement, ask a question. So I'll have, uh, hey, I'm doing, you know, anybody has a question about, you know, divorce law and their case, drop it in the comments. And that's a way where like somebody is raising their hand and saying, I have a problem and you can show off your expertise. So uh, just experimenting with the interactivity of it and being yeah. willing to look a little silly sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, let, let your personality show through it is, is so important. Like, you know, you're just a human, like everybody else, you know, and you're, 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 you're a business doing good stuff. Like let people see that. Um, the other thing that, that I wanted to ask you about, cause you talk about sharing, resharing, reposting, recycling, stuff like that. I mean, what, what's, you know, in terms of frequency, you know, how many posts per day per week, you know, have you seen that works, works really well in terms of, you know, at least maximizing the organic reach of your stuff? Yeah, you, un unfortunately, you cannot do too much, I don't think. So, uh, well, yeah. yes, somebody saying do it five days a week might seem daunting, uh, at least having a frequency of once or twice a week. But like, those don't all have to be your own posts, right? So like, I could just see something that relates to it might not even relate to divorce law specifically but just something that resonates with me maybe something inspirational and i can just literally click a little paper airplane on there hit share yep. and in five seconds somebody might see that and say oh my god that really hit with me i like what how this person thinks like they get me and that you know it's annoying sometimes i'll hit a reshare on somebody else's post and it'll get a hundred x the engagement of the thing that I, you know, did the captions on, I added this to. So you never know what's going to hit, but always like, you know, if you see stuff, if you're on social media, which a lot of people are in their personal life, hit yeah. that save button. Oh, I kind of like that one. And then you can just literally like put it out there. And uh, the other piece that I think is a real advantage that you can leverage is what do we all like? We all like when people talk about us. Uh, so sharing maybe your colleagues uh, content, maybe there's a realtor that you work with that helps a lot of people, or maybe there's a restaurant down the street that you like sharing their content again, not about you, but I can tell you like, even to this day, if somebody reshares my stuff, I am like messaging them and we have thousand, you know, 14,000 followers because that it, it makes you feel good. And it's a way yeah. to like, in five seconds, build a connection, a relationship that Social media has its problems. Look, I mean, I, I can crap on it all the time. It's <laughs> it's a time suck. It's superficial at times. But like, yeah. if I've got a, a restaurant and somebody shares, like I had a great meal there with a little picture of it, I'm going to reach out to that person and say, John, thank you so much. That meant a lot to me. If I ever come across somebody that you know needs an attorney, I'll be sure to send them your way. It took you 10 seconds. It's incredible yeah. what you can do with somebody. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's all just about providing value, you know, in any way that you can. 
Um, one more, one more question that I had for you, and this is, it's almost a little bit more self-serving just, just to see what, what your experience has been. I think the majority of people who engage with your content, you know, like and commenting stuff like that are the consumers are the people who are looking for attorneys. Do you have any lawyers who are part of your directory or your network? And we could talk about that in a second. Do you have any of them who are engaging in your stuff as well? Oh, absolutely. Because I think, again, they are on social media. They know they need to be on there. And it's like, oh, that that was a post that really resonated with me. Can I borrow that? And again, mm -hmm. I'll be happy to share their stuff. Um, if they do join WTF Divorce, we really feature them, have them on the podcast. But yeah, there's a lot of lawyers. I'll like look through the list and I'll be like, oh my God, I didn't know there's you know lawyers all across the country that are viewing this content because of a hashtag that might have said divorce divorce law, it might just pop on their feed. Yeah. And uh, again, I think it could even be your colleagues. But yes, I think, you know, the more you put out there like that, uh, yeah. the professionals who might not be as active, they might not tell you they're looking, somebody might be lurking, but people are seeing it and you just might not be aware of it. Awesome. Yeah. So how can people, you know, learn more about WTF Divorce, our audience, how can they even uh, get on the directory and the referral service that you have? Uh, let everybody know. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, so we're on Instagram at WTF Divorce. We are at WTFDivorce.com. Email, I'm Rob at WTFDivorce.com. Uh, but yeah, we've also been experimenting with as we've grown the audience, like I just last week put out a, hey, is anybody looking for a divorce attorney? DM me a message. You know, they do want to stay private. So they're like, keep yeah. it on Instagram. Don't email me. But and your city. And I was like, oh, let me just throw this experiment in like 24 hours. We had 23 people in Vancouver, New York, you know, San Antonio writing. I need help. So like your people might not be going to your page, but if like if they are going somewhere, meet them where they're already at. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's something that I'm excited to work with more lawyers, feature their content. It is great when they're already making content, but just again, having an online presence, it does take a little bit of time, but like, it, it's such a valuable thing that uh, you never know it, it's going to pay off for you at some point. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, just a, a ton of good stuff here. Uh, you know, for people out there in the family law space, definitely check out WTF Divorce and and maybe, you know, that can be a good referral source for you. If you're not in that family law space, I still think, you know, just a lot of good nuggets here about building your social media community and and finding ways to really reach your target audience and, and get them involved in that. Uh, one final question for you before we wrap up here. If you had one final piece of advice for our audience, what would it be? Uh, when in doubt, ship it. Put it out there. Uh, you do more by holding stuff back. If it feels a little uncomfortable, it's probably actually more valuable. So, you know, going along with that, nobody's really thinking about you like we are. So if you have a thought that you think is important, you know, share it. I think uh, if, if it benefits one person, you can really change, you know, somebody's life. So put what your expertise and your your personality out into the world. Yeah, love that. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Well, Rob, thanks so much for joining us. Lots of good stuff here. I mean, I know uh, I've got some nuggets that I'm going to take back to my team and, and stuff that we can do with our own social media presence. Uh, if you're not following us on social media, definitely make sure you're doing that, by the way, all you people listening out there. But uh, other than that, that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much. Continue to rate and review us on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on as well. That really does help us out. But that's it. Rob, thanks so much. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.